there was one case study that's probably one of my favorite stories because when we walked into the office there, this is a, an insurance company, the president called happiness research fluff. Anyway, at the end of an 18 month period of applying these tools, we found that their new insurance application rate, which was a big metric for them, went up by 237%. More interestingly, I think their gross revenues went up by 50%, which wow. for them was $300 million. Yeah. What? And um, and then on a well-being perspective, we saw work and life satisfaction of the team members improve dramatically. So that same president, by the way, that gave pushback in the beginning, he's now one of the biggest proponents of applying positive psychology research ever because <laughs> he saw what he could do. Welcome to Engage Presents. I'm Engage co-founder and president Jake Olson. In this interview series, I ask Engage talent the most common questions we hear from event planners to help you get to know them and their stories in 15 minutes or less. Thanks for listening. Welcome back to Engage Presents. Today we have an amazing guest, Michelle Geelan. She is a best-selling author and she is a happiness researcher. Um, Michelle, thank you so much for joining us today. I won't steal your thunder, but I do want to just give it the floor to you first. Who are you and what takeaways will an audience get when you speak to them? Uh, thanks so much for having me. It's great to be here with you. Uh, so I'm a happiness researcher, otherwise known as a positive psychology researcher. And I look at the connection between happiness, optimism, resilience, and business health and educational outcomes. And so during my talk, typically what I share is um, I give the audience an opportunity to understand more deeply about the research, in particular, how when our brain's in a more positive and optimistic state, it fuels every single outcome that we know how to track, including higher levels of productive energy, 300% higher levels of creativity, a 23% drop in stress-related symptoms like headaches, backaches, and fatigue. And then I share case studies from our work. And most importantly, the back half of the talk are actionable tools that people can use. So these are small positive communication habits that help inoculate our brain against stress and negativity, ripple out a positive mindset to other people, and ultimately drive success for all. That is amazing. How, how many hours of research have you put in? Do you, do you have any idea? Oh, uh, countless, it feels like. Um, I've had incredible opportunities over the past decade and a half to work with a third of the Fortune 100 companies, lots of school districts, healthcare organizations. And what we look at there in those settings is how when an individual changes their mindset and positive behaviors, how that fuels their individual success. And then what happens when we do it with teams and when we do it organization-wide? There was one case study that's probably one of my favorite stories because when we walked into the office there, this is a, an insurance company, the president called happiness research fluff. So that is a bold audience right there. Um, but we shared some of the same numbers that I briefly mentioned, and mm -hmm. he's a numbers guy. He liked that. He's also a sports guy. So the idea of rewriting the basic playbook of business practices that they do day in and day out and applying positive psychology sounded very interesting to him. So they did that. We tracked them over time. And after making small changes, and I'll give you an example, a very tactical one, uh, they redid their morning meetings. You know, morning meetings can either be soul sucking or life giving, depending on how you do it. Mm -hmm. They decided to get the sales professionals off the phones for just 10 minutes, get together as a team and, um, and do two things, share successes from the past 48 hours that people might not have heard about. And, and if anyone needed a little extra support that day, they could speak up and their colleagues could rally around them and, um, and give them ideas and help support them. Anyway, at the end of an 18 month period of applying these tools, we found that their new insurance application rate, which was a big metric for them, went up by 237%. More interestingly, I think their gross revenues went up by 50%, which wow. for them was $300 million. Yeah. Wow. And um, and then on a well-being perspective, we saw work and life satisfaction of the team members improve dramatically. So that same president, by the way, that gave pushback in the beginning, he's now one of the biggest proponents of applying positive psychology research ever because <laughs> he saw what he could do. Wow. So change in minds and paying dividends there, Michelle. I love it. I love it. Um, what is what would you tell an event planner? What what is it like to work with you? And what what are you like? You know, pre speech on stage, just kind of pre call. What 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 is it like to work with Michelle Keenan? Yeah, so I try to make things as easy as possible because I've been on the flip side. So my former 
role was I worked my way up to becoming a national news anchor with CBS News. And um, you meet some divas there. <laughs> so I always strive not to be one. Um, but yeah, I, I really want to know what's going on at the organization, why the event planners are bringing me in, what spoke to them about this research and this work and how it can apply to their organization so that I can customize the message. I try to make the talk as engaging as possible. Within the first few minutes, we have an interactive experiment that gets everyone laughing. It's also a great learning opportunity. Partway through the talk, we have oftentimes a video that everyone's looking for one thing to happen, something else is happening. Again, a great learning moment there. And, um, and then I pepper the talk with lots of ideas. So while I typically share three tools that people can use, really there's more than 20 ideas that they've, they want to adapt this research to their life, those small, simple, positive habits we talked about, mm -hmm. that they are walking out with lots of potential ideas. Um, although I encourage people only pick one because, you know, if we pick up too much at once, sometimes it doesn't work as well. I totally understand. I can hear I can hear the anchor voice a little bit in your, <laughs> your style right now. Um, yeah. That's th there you go. Um, take us kind of more on a personal note. Where where in in life have you had to really apply you know your research or what you have learned to um, you know a personal matter, um, be it you know hardship, adversity, or or whatever? Um, give give me an example of where you've really had to apply that. Yeah, so, well, I came to see the power of the research when I was working at CBS and we were anchoring one negative news story after another. This is at the height of the recession. And so there I pitched this idea called Happy Week. This is sort of the seeds of everything. And we brought in experts from positive psychology, the scientific study of happiness and human potential to talk about ways you can take back control of your happiness as the external world feels like it's spiraling out of control. Um, since then, you know, the research we've done has just added to all of the reasons why I think this research is so incredibly valuable. Um, on a personal note, I am a mother of two. Um, I'm married to a happiness researcher, so we get to <laughs> paddle test all of this in our house. And, um, and I absolutely love talking with people who've been exposed to this research and put it into practice and hearing their stories. Um, a very you know, practical um, way that I put it into practice. Our, I was seven months pregnant with our daughter. I went into labor earlier than expected. Um, she went to the NICU and so did I as a result. I sat by her bedside for 60 days. And during that time of uncertainty, I ended up every day uh, writing down three new and unique things we were grateful for. And it wasn't usually three, it was a whole lot more. And sending the positive notes, um, praising or thanking the staff at the hospital or the mm. friends and family that came out to support us. Um, those small ways help me see life differently. Mm. Um, and one thing I think that's really important um, that I haven't touched on yet is the definition of optimism, because I think sometimes, you know, people can get the wrong idea. The way we look at it is it's the expectation of good things to happen and the belief that our behavior matters, especially in the face of those challenges. So especially in the face of uncertainty with medical conditions or, uh, you know, you lose a job, it, our brain responds differently when we're more optimistic. But I mentioned my husband's a happiness researcher, and um, he, um, he's also a speaker, Sean Acor. Wonderful to check out. If you've seen a TED Talk that's 12 minutes long on the science of happiness from a guy from Harvard, that's him. He's very funny. Um, and so uh, one time he came back from a talk on the power of optimism and he's, you know, I love his stories because they're always great. And he says to me, you won't believe what happened. I said, what is it? He said, so I, I spoke to this company, Power of Optimism, CEO, loved the research and came up to me afterwards and said, I want to figure out how to more deeply embed it in my organization. Can I give you a ride to the airport? So Sean's like, yeah, sure. Sounds great. Gets in the guy's car, clicks on a seatbelt. The CEO gets in and doesn't put on a seatbelt. So after a while, the little seatbelt bell is going off. And, you know, Sean, again, very funny, thinks he's making a joke, turns to CEO and is like, oh, you don't wear seatbelts? The guy's like, no, nah, man, I saw your talk. I'm an optimist. <laughs> Sean's like, no, you're some something else, right? <laughs> so uh, optimism doesn't stop cars from hitting us or reality from impinging upon us. So what we're talking about here in this research, it's rational optimism. It's taking a realistic assessment of the present moment while maintaining a belief that our behavior matters. So as I'm sitting by my daughter's bedside, for instance, and I'm uncertain about what's happening in, you know, over the course of her, the next 60 days or her life, um, 
I, I'm maintaining a more optimistic mindset by seeing all those pieces of my reality that show me that picture that allows me to expect good things to happen and believe my behavior matters. Um, and the good news is she's doing fine and beautiful and wonderful and she's six years old now. So that's, <laughs> that's, a, that's, right. yeah. that's amazing and beautifully put. Um, lastly, do you want to talk about your book? Oh, sure. Yeah. So um, this is Broadcasting Happiness right here. And uh, it is um, the, it's the science of igniting and sustaining positive change. So it looks predominantly at how you create positive change in your own life, but also how influential you are over other people. A lot of times people will say to me, you know, oh, I've had someone in my lifetime say to me, oh, you can't change other people, right? You can't mm -hmm. change other. I remember my mom sat me down at appropriate age to start looking for a husband, so 14, and she's like, you know, look for someone who knows who he is, who's got his life together, because you can't change other people. And that's excellent advice, by the way. She's right. You should definitely do that. But, um, but when you look at it from a scientific perspective, it's actually based upon flawed logic, because if we can't change other people, how come that negative guy on our team can sometimes so easily influence us, Perfect. right? So the power goes both ways. So this book is all about how powerful you are from a scientific perspective, how quickly you change other people, and those tools that allow you to do it. Start conversations with something positive, to deliver bad news better, um, and a bunch of other things that help get not only your mindset in a good place, but also help you do the same for other people to drive those success outcomes that we track. It seems like it's a much needed mindset and advice in the world we live in. So we appreciate what you do, Michelle. We're, we're happy to have you on our platform and being able to help you present your message to, again, a world that much needs it. So thank you for joining us today with Engage Presents. Stay tuned for more guests like Michelle. And uh, with that, we'll, we'll sign off. Thank you, Michelle. You're the broadcaster, so maybe you can, you can sign us off. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you so much, and I hope you have a great day. <laughs> <There you go. laughs>